Layla, did you really mean it? Going no contact? Not that I'm worried or anything, just curious how you survived on the streets. It's a cold world out there, you know. Hi, mom. What's with the attitude? Why so cold? It doesn't matter if we're at odds. I'm still your mother. Are you really my mother? A woman keeping her daughter from her father isn't fit to be called a mother. <laughs> How old are you, 15? You'll understand one day that I kept him away for your own good. Stop being silly and come home. You have chores to catch up on. A maid? That's all I am to you, right? You don't care how I survived, but you're worried about the chores? If you can plan to run away, you can plan to survive. I'm proud of you for taking that bold step. <laughs> I'm a great teacher. Unbelievable, Scarlet! Get home and clean up. I didn't spend eight hours in the labor room for you to leave all the work to me. And if you don't find me, the key's in its spot. I'm not coming home until you tell me who my father is. Stupid girl! I've told you, he's dead! He's inexistent to you! I want a sense of identity, Scarlet. You know who your father is, don't you? I don't! All the kids on the block are products of our mistakes. Get used to it. You don't have a father. That's your identity. Then get used to not having me around. For real? A contact or a name, or else I'm not coming back. Fine. Check the call log. His name is Benedict. Really? Let me see. That's your contact. Now come home and clean up. I'm going on a date. Again? Don't you get tired of this? It's none of your business. I'm finding us a rich man. And give me another sibling? I have ten already, I'm tired. Shut up! I hope you gave me the right name this time. Yes, but don't expect too much. He's dead. Hello, happy birthday, Layla. I wish you all the beautiful things life has to offer. Huh? No way. I... I thought you were... I... you? How? I know you might be scared, but there's no need to be. I'm not dead. I'm more alive than you can imagine. Scarlet said you were no longer alive. Oh, I've been waiting for this day all my life. For 25 years. I hope to hear from you one day. I was never dead. Not even for a single moment. Can I call you Dad? No, darling. That's too formal and too quick. You can call me Benedict. But you're my father, aren't you? Um... That silence. I know it too well. You're not my father either? No, dear, I'm not. I was scared, you know? I thought Mom might have been lying to me again. I dreaded the possibility that you weren't my father. But I couldn't help but hope. I forced myself to believe you were the one. And that's why I sent you a text every day for ten years, hoping you would somehow read it. I did, Layla. I read your text every single day for ten years. And I am really proud of your determination. My beautiful lawyer. Why did you never text me back then? You always received my messages, but you never seemed to read them. I really thought you were dead. I did not want to dash your hopes or hurt your feelings. And I did not want you to stop sending those messages either. So why did you do it? You see, that very day you sent your first text was the day I lost my only daughter. Oh, I'm so sorry. You don't need to be. You were my compensation. Your texts every day gave me a reason to hope. You made me feel like my Lily was still there. Oh. I'm still so confused. Oh, it's understandable. Ask me anything. I'll tell you everything you need to know. Why did mom give me your number when she knew you were not my dad? I guess it was because I was just recently involved in a fatal accident that claimed my left leg. I'm sure she thought I was dead. Okay. So, but is there no way you could be my father? Truth be told, I did have a fling with Scarlet. But being a man of integrity, I ran a DNA test to confirm your paternity when she brought it up. And? It was negative. I even have proof. 
No. I really thought I'd found my father. I know. You've told me a whole lot about your dream of having him walk you down the aisle. I might have to give up on that dream now. My wedding is in three months. I'm sorry that I'm not your biological father, but I am willing to help you look for him. Really? Yeah. I believe he is alive. I've even been compiling a long list of men I know of that could potentially be your father. It was going to be my gift to you today. Oh my god. That's... I don't know what to say. 7 Benton Drive, the last floor. That's my restaurant. Let's meet up, okay? Okay. You lying, cheating scumbag! What? Watch your tongue, young woman. You told me Benedict was dead. You told me he was my father. Okay. So? What do you mean, okay? You lied to me again. What does it matter? It's not like it would change anything if you knew who your father was. How can you even say that? I want to know who my father is, Scarlet. Is that too much to ask? I didn't ask to be born. Why do I have to be the one struggling for an identity when you keep jumping from one rich man's bed to the other? So let me get this straight. You just call to insult me. My wedding is in three months, Mom. I want my father to walk me down the aisle. I was going to do it with Benedict's photograph because I thought he was my father. But now that I know that he's not, I just really want to find my father. Come to the house. We can talk this out. Talk? I don't want to talk anymore. What do you want to tell me? That I should get used to being fatherless? That I should take it lying down just like the other kids on the block? That's old news. I cannot come all the way there for nonsense. Then I cannot help you. What? I can't help you. Besides, it's too late to know who he is. I mean, you've got your life figured out, you know? You practically don't need a father. You are just so evil. See? Layla, I don't have time to be trading words with you right now. I'm actually running late for my date with a money bag I just found. Scarlet, you need to tell me who my father is or else I'm not coming home. <laughs> Back to old tricks, I see. You make me laugh, Layla. Those things don't move me anymore. I literally have like... 11 other children to fall back to. You're the least of my worries. Okay, fine. Then you cannot come to my wedding. What did you say? You are not invited. You do not deserve to share in my joy. What? Layla, how much more desperate can you get? What do I have to gain from being in your broke-ass wedding? You're getting married to a nobody. I cannot be found in such gatherings. I hate you. Uh, it's almost time for my date with a rich guy on Tinder. <gasps> I have to go get ready. Good luck finding your non-existent father. Hello, Layla. Hi, Mr. Benedict. How are you? Ugh, ugh. I'm frustrated. Why? Nothing we have done so far is working. We've checked out nine of the 11 men you listed, and none has turned out to be the one. I'm running out of patience and money. I cannot keep paying fares for such long trips to different cities in search of something I could have found if my crazy mother just told me. I understand your frustrations, Layla, but we should at least be glad they all consented to DNA testing. What if they said no? You would have been double frustrated by now. It's funny, but not funny. I just wish we could make some progress. We will. You just have to keep your hopes up. I don't even feel like trying anymore. Maybe I should just give up on my childhood dreams. You cannot give up now, dear. You've come such a long way to stop now. We're going to finish what we started. And if we're unable to find your real father, then so be it. Is there anybody you think it might be from the two? It's hard to say, but we'll just do what we can and leave the rest up to nature. Even though I'm kind of worried about something. What is it? Nathan Williams. That's one of the last two men on the list. What about him? I doubt he'll consent to taking a test. Why? Who would reject the idea of finding his lost child? Well, a man who doesn't need one would. And Nathan is one of such men. We used to be friends back in the day. Best of friends, even. But our friendship grew sour when Scarlet came between us. Okay. 
They were dating at first, but Scarlett left him because he was broke at the time. Ugh, typical mom. She got with me briefly after that just to spite him. And that was how she broke up our friendship. Wow. But things have changed today. He's the founder and CEO of Wills & Company, one of the fastest growing construction firms in the city. He's so rich that Scarlett would be flustered if she found out she ditched a guy with so much potential out of greed. But he has a strong reputation for being a no-nonsense kind of guy. I'm not even sure I can help you approach him for a DNA test, as I did with the others, for shame of what I did to him 26 years ago. So, what do we do now? I don't know. You know how you've been asking me what gift you'll give me for my wedding? Yes. What about that? This is it. We'll go to see Mr. Williams together. Hey, Layla. Happy wedding day. I would ask how the wedding's going, but I really don't care. Guess what? I ignored your uninvitation and showed up anyway, even though you changed the venue to escape me. But that's not the best part. You won't believe who I brought with me. Kingston McClary. CEO of GUA Automobiles, and more importantly, the new man in my life. I'm sure you can't relate to all this luxury. Hence the lack of replies to my texts, right? I told you I'm still young and attractive and can get any rich man I want. <laughs> I'd say I could steal your husband, but there's no need because he's a broke dumbass. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll see me on the dance floor soon. Why no response? Oh, the wedding's on. Let's see what we have here, shall we? Oh, it's even more lavish than expected. Layla, are you sure you didn't lie about your husband being an accountant? Oh, you finally got someone to walk you down the aisle. Pretty sure they're broke too. Wait, what? Two men? Benedict? <laughs> what? I told you, only broke men work with you. This one's not just broke, but he has a broken leg. <laughs> You're practically the one walking him down the aisle. And who's the other one? Is that Nathan? No way. What's he doing here? How dare you, you ungrateful imp! Excuse me? You found Nathan, and you didn't think to tell me? That's a little demanding, don't you think? I'm an adult married woman now. You don't think I'll be telling you everything I do, do you? I think this is all my fault. The reason you're still able to text me and talk rubbish is that I haven't blocked you on all platforms yet. You can't even do that! Want to bet? I'll do it now and a million times over if I have to. You are wicked and selfish and materialistic to the point that you did not care at all what impact your stupid actions had on me or any of my siblings. You can't speak to me in that tone of voice, young lady. Oh, but I can. Because you deserve to be spoken to that way and even worse. You're not a mother, and should not be regarded as one. This isn't for you to decide, Layla. I brought you into this world. I call the shots. You did, but not anymore. I have finally found my real father. My childhood dream of having my father walk me down the aisle came true. Only, I had it even better. I had two fathers walk me down the aisle yesterday, and it was the most glorious thing I've ever experienced. Though, I was somewhat hurt by the fact that Mr. Benedict was more of a father to me in three months than you've been a mother all my life. But does that matter anymore? I also got to marry the man of my dreams. My life is going great, and you do not have a part in it. That's unfair. No. Unfair is you abandoning the father of your first child simply because he was broke. He could not give me the million dollars I needed then for my cosmetic procedure. He didn't want me to be in the trend like all the other ladies. Can you blame me for wanting what I want? So I had to dump his sorry ass. It will shock you to know that his ass isn't so sorry anymore. Huh? He's now massively wealthy and owns different 13-figure earning companies globally. What? How? It can't be. Nathan cannot be more than a hotel janitor. He didn't even get a college degree. Well, we can say the tables have turned. You know the new hall that was used for my wedding? 
the elegant outfits and exquisite food and decor. Those were all last minute changes by my dad. I'm glad you stubbornly showed up at the wedding, even though I asked you not to. At least you got to see me living the new, lavish life you could never have. That will teach you to be less materialistic and start working on building valuable relationships. Can you guys take me back? What did you say? I want to be in your lives. Yours and Nathan's as well. I'm really sorry for all that happened in the past. I was really stupid and foolish and... You don't have to rain abuses on yourself. If I didn't know you well enough... I'd think you were genuinely sorry. But I know that every step you take is for your own selfish interests. Come on, Layla. Please have mercy on me. I'm still your mother. All your siblings have moved away. Now I'm all alone. I need the money. You lost every right to be my mother the day you blatantly refused to help me find my father. You knew who he was, and still kept him away from me. Because I did not want you to be affiliated with poverty. Don't you get it? I was trying to protect you. Everything I've done is for you and your siblings. But I never get the credit I deserve. Thank you. But I'm no longer interested. You can take your goodwill someplace else. Fine. Pay me then. Huh? You can't just wake up one morning and decide to choose your father over me. You have to pay me for all the years I single-handedly took care of you. You have to pay me for all the meals you ate for free under my roof. I need a $10 million settlement. I'm sure you know that's not happening. If you don't pay me, I will sue you. You won't be getting a dime from me or my father. You're just a creepy person. Please stay as far away from me as you can. Me? Creepy? Oh, you haven't seen Creepy yet. I'll come all the way to your hotel and camp outside your room for as long as it takes for you to give me my money. You're not going to do that, Mom. You think? You've done a lot of crazy things in the past already, so I would advise you to protect the little dignity you have left. Don't make any further mistakes. Oh, you'll pay for this, Layla. I'll make you pay. Layla! If you assume Scarlet would abandon her threats, think again. It appeared she gleaned no lessons from the recent events. Instead, Layla awoke the next morning to discover her mother nestled in a camp tent right in front of their honeymoon resort. The moment she laid eyes on her bewildered daughter, Scarlet brandished a crazily decorated placard and incessantly chanted the words, Pay me my money. Scarlet's screams eventually caught the attention of other resort guests and, ultimately, security agents who promptly had her escorted off the premises. It was later revealed that one of Layla's siblings divulged her exact location to their erratic mother, spurred by threats of self-harm. Ironically, all of this chaos was orchestrated to capture Nathan's attention or perhaps secure some of his wealth. Scarlet's poorly devised plan, however, only intensified Nathan's disdain for her. Not to mention Layla and her newlywed husband, who opted to relocate to another city after deciding Scarlet needed the care of a psychiatric facility. As years passed, Layla and her husband welcomed three beautiful children working diligently to maintain a joyful and stable family life. Their commitment stemmed from a desire to shield their children from the hardships Layla endured in her tumultuous past. <laughs>